I'm Bill. I'm Mark. And this is our tree farm. We work here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA, with my old man Don, my son Michael, and my son James. And one thing we've learned after 35 years in the tree business, we never know what job we're going to do next. This is Mike Lewis at Lewis Wholesale Nursery and Michael Hurst of Highland Hill Farm and they're going to be discussing the uh, paperbark maple or acar grissom. Good morning. We're here at Lewis Nursery looking at some paperbark maples. Paperbark maples are a very nice tree. It has nice bark on it. If you look closely you can see the exfoliating bark. It almost looks like cinnamon strips. Uh, very attractive when it's peeling. After it peels it's a nice smooth shiny bark. Uh, paperbark maples get a real great fall color. It gets lots of intense reds and purples in them. Uh, it's a slower growing tree. It'll grow about six, eight inches a year for you. Um, we have them available in single stems as well as a multiple stem form like we have here. Uh, it's a great focal piece for anywhere on the property, uh, particularly in front of your house, uh, in a nice little garden. Mike, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, you can put this one closer to your houses, not like, like a river birch or any other bigger maples. Since this won't grow as big, this you can put closer, it won't grow into your siding or grow up over your house or into your gutters or anything like that. And leaving leaves in your gutters, which is good. Other things that people like about them is that uh, once you put them in, they're usually pretty good. Right? And when the leaves fall off it, like Lewis said, you can see the bark, and that's when the bark really becomes an attraction piece to it. Do people highlight this at night with a light? They can, and usually what they do is they put lights up against it and having shadow cast against the house. How easy is this tree to, to, to grow? It's not it's the easiest tree, but you can do I, it. I think, it's very, I think it's very adaptable to a lot of different kinds of soil types. It'll, it'll take soil that's a little on the wet side as well as a little on the dry side. Zone 5 to about 7? Yes. And when you dig this, uh, describe how you'll dig it and what you'll do to dig it. Okay, this, this time of year we pre-treat the tree with Bioplex uh, just to make sure that it'll transplant easily. Uh, what we do is we have a mechanical tree spade, a hydraulic tree spade that'll just dig a ball out for us. We'll put it in a wire basket with burlap tied up nice and tight. When it's ready to be planted, everything can go right in the ground. You don't need to cut the basket off, uh, cut the string off. It, everything will just ride in the ground itself, the wire basket. Uh, won't affect the growth of the tree. Now you have these in both uh, single stem and multi-stem. Okay, and what other trees do you have just in this area we can briefly give people a... a here. Mr. Hurst, we have some forest pansy redbud. Forest pansy redbud comes out, and it'll show up good against my shirt, with this reddish purplish foliage early spring to about midsummer. It'll fade a little bit if you look further down the branch. Uh, any new growth will still come out with this purple color uh, it's very attractive. It gets your typical red bud flower. Nice big, almost magenta type flower. At each leaf bud there'll be a flower. Uh, flowers on the new new growth from this year as well as the old growth from last year. Uh, it's a nice large shrub. Uh, it's, a it's also available in a tree form. Okay, right. and then over here? Over here we have another kind of red bud called Circus Covey. It's a weeping red bud has the same magenta type flower. You can see the flower buds here. You can almost see the little color in them already if you get up close. Um, and this just has a nice weeping branches. Great focal piece in a garden. Um, anywhere in your landscape. Uh, in the spring when it blooms it's just a cascading uh, bunch of flowers. Those magenta colored flowers. What are these trees over here, Mike? This is an unusual one. It has different colors on it. This is a Pradia persica. It's Persian Pradia. Persia it's a member of the witch hazel family. You can see it's already starting to get its fall color. It's yep. just incredible. It purples and reds mm. and oranges and yellow. Uh, it gets an exfoliating bark. The bark starts to flake off a little bit when it gets older. It's mottled. Uh, How tall will this grow to be? About 20, 25 feet tall. It'll stay nice and compact. Uh, and again, this plant's also available in a multiple stem or shrub form as well as a tree form. It gets a little purple flower on it in springtime. It's pretty insignificant, but if you look closely, you can find it. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, we hope if you uh, need some nursery stock, you give us a call at 215-651-8329. This is Bill Hurst, Mike Lewis, and Michael Hurst. And we're here to serve your tree needs. Thank you very much.
<laughs> How you doing? We're here at Highland Hills Farm looking at Fastidiate uh, Hornbeam, or columnar Hornbeam. It's a nice, narrow plant, as you can see. My fingertips are eight feet high. Uh, this is a plant that will stay nice and tight, nice accent point. Uh, anytime, any place in your landscape where you need a nice vertical line, uh, this is a great plant for that. Some people also use it as a formal hedge. Uh, they'll get a little bit wider with age, but they stay nice and tight for many, many years. And it has a nice silver bark. And I don't know what else to say about it. Mike, do <laughs> you have anything to add? Well, I see it used when people grew next to their decks so that when they grow up, the branches don't grow underneath the deck, it grows upright. And so that means when people are walking by, they don't have to trim it or wall brush into it as much. Other uses that they do use it for is you can put a little bit closer to the house since it doesn't branch out. Um, and if yeah. you want to if you want to separate a, a property line and get a real tight hedge, yeah, you can do it right there. Yeah, you can use or spruces or anything. Right. Alternative. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then we see this, we're in uh, September, it's September 23rd, and we can see this autumn brilliance. This is the Amelanchier, and we can see that that's all in bloom right now. Just uh, a nice fall blooming plant with a red foliage in the fall. It'll turn a little red, and uh, it'll have a nice red berry into the winter, which the birds love. It's usually found in a naturalized setting, like along a, the woods or a wood line. And it's a great bird bush because it provides food and shelter for birds. And it's important to have bushes like this in your landscape for birds because if you have a bunch of sentinel trees like these bigger trees in the area, that's where a hawk will land and set there waiting for the little birds to feed on something on the ground. And then it'll, it'll try and kill the little birdies. And when it does, the bird will try and get into this bush. So you'll be able to see it not only save itself, but feed itself. So again, we're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA, and we do deliver plant and mulch up and down the East Coast for you. And this is just one of our many spots where we're getting our nursery stock from, and uh, we, we grow a lot of nursery stock here in Fountainville, and we have a big location in Bradford County where we have about 2,000 acres where we're growing material on. So give us a call at 215-651-832.